What even is Disney's Hollywood Studios? With a grand total of zero opening day attractions left and a 300% increase in rides since opening day, Disney MGM Studios, I mean Disney's Hollywood Studios, wins the award for most changed, hands down. But is all that change really good? What on earth? What was that? A meteor? Yeah, yeah, there it is by the old Great Movie Ride. An original? 1989 opening day Disney MGM Studios guidebook? Okay, this changes everything about how we're gonna do Disney's Hollywood Studios today. All right, starting with number one. Up here in the attractions list, number one is the Chinese theater home of the great movie ride, a spectacular journey into the movies. Please be advised young children may be frightened by some of the scenes. For further information, please see a cast member at the attraction entrance. Well, I think it looks like we've found that attraction entrance, but unfortunately, great movie ride, which was truly a great movie ride, is no longer, but Mickey and Minnie's Runaway World Way is. Great movie ride was Hollywood Disney MGM Studios flagship ride. Well, they were there were two and they were both the flagship, but for many years this stood as a monument to the history of film and uh, to the filmmaking process and just to great stories and uh, amazing memories of going to the movies with your, your family growing up, no matter how old you were. Um, there was nostalgia in it for you. As you can see behind me, this facade is a recreation of the Chinese theater originally built in Hollywood, California in 1928. So you have a beautifully replica, a perfect, beautiful replica of the Chinese theater in, in Hollywood. And inside you had this tribute to movies using an embarrassment of riches where real sets and uh, audio animatronics were concerned. Um, some of the highlights are seen from Casablanca. You had a really amazing segment from Wizard of Oz. Uh, you could go into Indiana Jones, uh, Alien. I mean, th this had something for everyone and that is one of the reasons everybody loved it and it feels like such a tragedy to have lost it because Nobody's happy with the fact that it's gone. I just met the kindest fellow guest. Matthew is his name. He asked me what I was doing. He told me I was doing a good job at whatever it was, which was so sweet. I said, Matthew, I'm out here talking about Great Movie Ride and it's making me, I'm starting to get emotional. I'm sad because uh, talking about it makes me remember how much I miss it. And he said, well, if, if I could just tell you that I really loved The Great Movie Ride also, but I think I love Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway better. And I said, I needed to hear that. I needed to know that some people like it better. And I think maybe a lot of people like it better because the wait times are higher. Everybody comes and they, they, have to, they have to ride Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. And maybe some people were skipping coming to see Great Movie Ride because they'd been on it a lot of times and they knew it was gonna happen and it took a little, it was kind of a long ride. Um, and he goes, yeah, tell, t tell people that, tell people that, um, that Matthew likes it more. And so, a little, he said, I like it a little more. I still miss Great Movie Ride and I loved that ride, but I like it a little more. So let's go ride it. One of the awesome things about going through the queue is that you get to be basically in the same spaces that the Great Movie Ride queue went through. I don't know if you remember the gowns, the costumes that would be on display there, but that was always my favorite part and same with my family, my uncle and my parents. Loved that. I'm crying.
to Theater of the Stars, a lively song and dance stage show about the movies featuring Disney characters. Oh, but guess what, folks? It's not where it used to be. It's still there. There's a Theater of the Stars, but it's way far back where you were unable to go in 1989. This is Sunset Boulevard, home to two of the most popular rides in Hollywood Studios, the Hollywood Tower of Terror, or the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror, or the Hollywood Tower Hotel, <laughs> and Rock and Roller Coaster, both of which opened later, Tower of Terror in 94 and Rock and Roller Coaster in 99. Where we are currently walking, this isn't anywhere we could have gone in 1989, but we would have been able to turn here and enter an amphitheater similar to the one that we have today that hosts Beauty and the Beast live on stage. When it opened on May 1st, 1989 with the park, Theater of the Stars hosted a, a show called Hollywood, Hollywood, a star-studded spectacular exclamation point that opened here on May 1st, 1989 with Hollywood Studios. This very location was where you would enter. Now it is Legends of Hollywood, which is a Pandora jewelry location. They also have some other, few other brands in there, but this is where you would enter and go back into Theater of the Stars. In 1991, the show switched to Beauty and the Beast live on stage, which still plays to this day. Even though the location changed, they moved it. And you know what I think we should do? I think we should go watch it because the theater is called the same thing. And it has a, a show that's been running there since 1991, which isn't that long after the park opened. So I think we should count today Beauty and the Beast live on stage and Theater of the Stars as something we experience when celebrating opening day Disney MGM Studios. So in LA and Hollywood, there are these amphitheaters that are different places up in the hills. There's like the um, Hollywood Bowl and the one that I went to I, I was, um, I had a friend performing at the Greek Theater and we walked up from another friend's house. We, it's like a thing that you just walk to these amphitheaters if you live nearby, and it's really, really cool. And that's what this reminds me of completely, frankly. I just had that experience last, not this past summer, but the summer before. And the whole time we were walking, I was like, oh my gosh, it's like we're walking up to the Theater of the Stars. <laughs> I know that, you know, Art imitates life and then life feels like art sometimes or something, but um, I think they did a really good job with this, making it feel like it was in the LA area and uh, just this really cool amphitheater that you get to walk into and see an amazing show right in the middle of everything else. Number three. Oh, restaurants. Okay, awesome. The Hollywood Brown Derby. Enjoy elegant dining in the finest Hollywood tradition, featuring the world famous Cobb salad, steaks, seafood, pasta specialties, hot and cold sandwiches, and fine California wines. Reservations available at the door. Wow, lots of information. I'm going to check to see if uh, is still the case. But number three here, number three here, and that looks like number three right here. 
Welcome to the Hollywood Brown Derby, friends. Now, Brown Derby was actually a chain of restaurants in the LA area. Hollywood Brown Derby being specifically in Hollywood on the corner of Hollywood and Vine. It had a very prestigious address and it looked very much like this building here, almost identical. Over here to the right of the front entrance, you can see that there is a little plaque that says this building is inspired by the Vine Street Brown Derby, originally built in Hollywood, California in 1928. Very cool. One thing that made all of the Brown Derby locations in Los Angeles iconic was the use of caricatures, kind of like they do in Sardis in New York City. Um, they were all over the place and they are all over inside, not only the entryway here, but also inside the main dining room. Something that is not an opening day attraction, but a cool detail here at Hollywood Brown Derby is the fact that it is also, it has become a Club 33 location. This is where guests, members of Club 33 can check in here and go up to the Club 33 lounge. You can either walk in and join a walk-up list. You can also do that through the My Disney Experience app. Of course, we always recommend if something is very important to you that you make a reservation for it in terms of dining. So if Hollywood Brown Derby is a priority for you, which if you want to take a step back in time to 1989 opening day, Disney MGM Studios, I think it should be, then you're gonna to wanna to make that reservation six weeks in advance from the day you plan on attending. So I worked at the movie ride from 2006 to 2008. Amazing. I was a tour guide, I did the gangster role, and no. I did the bandit role. No, oh, I'm, you're a celebrity. Um, I'm embarrassed, I'm and sorry. And I have been on Mickey and Minnie. Yes. Numerous times since. Yes. The movie ride, I feel like, was getting a little bit older. Uh-huh, yes. And without Agreed. any of the repairs. Yes. It, and it, updating. It needed an update, yeah. So I'm very happy with Mickey and Minnie. Me too. I know I my fellow movie riders yes. from the past, yes. some are not, and they refuse to go on the ride. Really? I'm not one of those people. Oh, <laughs> unbelievable cast member interaction. Hollywood Brown Derby. It's all here. 1989 is alive at Hollywood Brown Derby. <sighs> Thanks to this magical guide map. Okay, moving on to number four. Uh, let's see. Number four here. Well, it's right next to... Uh, connected to the Hollywood Brown Derby. Oh, I see. It could only be one thing. Starring roles. Um, oh, but I hate to tell you, starring roles is, is no more. At least not for now. It is interesting to me that the sign is still up. <laughs> But this used to be starring roles. This is where you would get your bakery items here in Disney MGM Studios. Um, as it says in our guidebook, delicious freshly baked muffins, cakes, cookies, pastries, and beverages. But um, sadly, it, it hasn't been open since the Starbucks location opened on Hollywood Boulevard. And Starbucks pastries are good, and they are delicious, but sometimes you want, you know, a bakery case, a treat case, like diversity, more Disney-centric treats. And uh, we don't have that in Hollywood Studios right now, but you did in 1989 at Starring Rolls. Moving on. <laughs> All right, number five is Oscar's Classic Car Souvenirs from First Cars to dream cars. Okay, from first cars to dream cars, drive away with your own classic souvenir. That's number five, which appears right here. Heavily selling the point that it is a souvenir shop, which now Oscars is still here. You could still visit this filling station, but you will no longer find souvenirs inside. You'll find convenience items. Well, let's just check it out for ourselves. Maybe it's more souvenir-like than I think. Oh my gosh. 
Guess who's wrong? It's me. Maybe it's changed a little bit in terms of the type of souvenir that's sold, but you can still buy them here in Oscars, just like you could in 1989. Number six, Movie Land memorabilia, souvenirs, sundries, and guest needs. Let's see where number six is. Oh my gosh, right here, just to the left of the entrance. And I think I found it right here. I could have, have always thought of Movie Land memorabilia as being the place to grab a last minute souvenir if you forgot to get something inside. You can see they've got your plush out front. They've got some bags that will be, can, you know, helpful carrying things around for the day. Um, oh, they're now selling Hear No Blair earmuffs? That is really cool. If um, somebody has sensitivity to sounds, uh, sensory sensitivity, then uh, you can purchase these earmuffs now that kind of block some of that sound, which is really cool. So Movie Land memorabilia, souvenirs, check. Sundries, check. And guest needs, absolutely check. I think they're providing uh, products for needs that you know maybe were unrecognized when this park opened in 1989. So, wow, Movie Land memorabilia, um, true to you know its its roots, but. Um, moving forward with the times in a way that I think is great. Oh, number seven, Sid Kahunga's one of a kind. Sid has a house full of authentic Hollywood collectibles he's willing to part with. This is gonna be one of the things that makes me really sad today because Sid Kahunga's is still here, um, but it is no longer being used for what it was originally designed for. This store literally sold authentic Hollywood memorabilia, including full outfits <laughs> that were worn by stars, sold in clear plastic suit bags or, um, that it was amazing. Like there were Lucille Ball, I remember there was like a gown that Lucille Ball had worn and just all these amazing stars of television and and movies and you could purchase outfits that they wore in here you could also buy things like i remember seeing sheet music i remember seeing photos that you could purchase that were autographed by movie stars uh real authentic true hollywood collectibles real memorabilia things that belong to stars and things that the stars signed specifically to be sold sid kahungas now it's a photo pass boutique. It's where you can go check in and find your ride photo from earlier. Sign very recently changed from Sid Kahunga's one of a kind antiques and curios to Sid Kahunga's one of a kind Tinseltown photos. It was being used for a uh, photo pass location uh, for a long time before the sign changed so it wasn't a huge surprise you can still see memorabilia that you are unable to purchase um i don't know if at one point this was for sale here at sid, sid kahunga's and it didn't sell so now it's become part of the permanent collection i have a feeling this might have been for sale too because this was the type of thing you could find on sale here. Not only is this the place that you will go if you need to retrieve, for instance, your ride photo um, that didn't show up in the photo section of the My Disney Experience app, but you can also come here to do some pin trading. All right, number eight, Crossroads of the World. Number eight, right there, Entrance Plaza is right behind us. And so that means we should be able to turn around and, oh wow, that's beautiful. Crossroads of the World. Crossroads of the World is actually a real place, uh, a real location in Los Angeles. Uh, it was opened in 1931 and the original intention was for it to be a permanent World's Fair. And if that sounds familiar, Epcot, yes, that was one of the original concepts for Epcot, that it be a permanent World's Fair. And um, that is pretty cool that it is represented 
<laughs> in this way as well. All right, number nine, Mickey's of Hollywood. Exclusive Disney character merchandise, including Disney and coat t-shirts and ready to wear. Studio sources say mini shops here all the time. Oh my gosh, if it's good enough for mini, it's definitely good enough for me. And on to number 10, the dark room presented by Kodak. Hello, mega sponsor. Uh, camera rental. Oh my gosh, this really helps. Uh, I got a lot of comments on the uh, Magic Kingdom version of this when I talked about the, the camera center that, um, you know, there was a lot more that you could do at the camera center than by film. And here you can, they're telling us we can rent, we could have rented a camera, um, access, we could camera rental, film, accessories, and two hour photo processing. 1989, they've gone about as far as they can go. Everything's up to date in Kansas City. And wow, oh wow, do we have a cool building to look at. In 2024, you won't be able to rent cameras, buy film um, or accessories, and you definitely won't be able to have your film processed in two hours, but you can purchase Magic Band Pluses you can purchase an otter box which is the kind of case that i have on my phone because one thing that somebody mentioned in the comments in the magic kingdom video is that the photo center sold photo albums and then that was a really cool thing you can get there it was really important to them and their family and uh you can purchase those one of those right now the 2024 photo album in the dark room. I did check if you could purchase disposable cameras here in dark room and unfortunately at this time you can't. So nothing camera related other than the fact that you can buy a photo album which shout out to the viewer who said that was really important to you and your family. I love the fact that in 2024 you can go like it's 1989 to dark room and purchase a photo album and keep all your cherished memories in there but I wish we could take pictures on real film and have it developed in two hours right here. That's amazing. All right, next is number 11, cover story. Picture yourself on the cover of a Hollywood magazine. It's still here. We don't have to imagine it. All right, so when they say picture yourself on the co cover of a Hollywood magazine, that wasn't a joke. You could literally have that done here. This was a memory maker location. So sort of a photo pass place like Sid Kahunga's is now, and you could actually take a photo in here and have it superimposed onto a magazine. That is not what this door is now. It's hats and ears. All right, looking number 12, Celebrity 5 and 10, Hollywood themed, ready to wear, jewelry, posters, and more. I love that it was Hollywood themed. Ugh, breaks my heart that it's not. Number 12, it's right here. It's next door to Cover Story. It's the Celebrity 5 and Dime, or Celebrity 5 and 10. The 5 and 10 cent store. All right, 13, sweet success. I don't think we have sweet success. We have, we have another, we have something cool. Uh, the theming of it is really cool, but it's not sweet success. It's Adrian and Edith's head to toe, which is funny because Edith head is one of the two people it's named after. Adrian was a very, very, very famous costume designer in Hollywood, uh, dressed just, I mean, did amazing, amazing, amazing gowns, like beautiful, beautiful, beautiful formal wear. Edith Head was also a very famous uh, costume designer who did gorgeous costumes for so many amazing films. And uh, so Adrian was a one named uh, wonder Edith head so this is a joke about Adrian and Edith's head Edith head to toe um, and it's a clothing boutique oh I'm eating my words and maybe I'll really eat them by buying some candy because look at this sweet success 1989 <laughs> is still alive in Adrian and Edith's head to toe in 2024 specialty candies oh my gosh there's a whole other wall i could not be more wrong this is 
an opening day store. Basically, what we're experiencing here, you can get specialty candies and, and treats in here, and I didn't even realize they sold them here, and I would never have realized unless I follow this map and just found it. That's amazing. You can also get um, special collections in here. So during the 100th anniversary, this was a place that you would see a lot of the vault stuff. And uh, right now there's the snacks, Disney Eats collection, which is very fun and colorful and has a lot of different, really neat, graphic, fun stuff. And then the Stitch, Stitch Attacks Snacks collection, we are on January so far, even though it's well into February, and uh, the first month is pretzel. We're waiting for popcorn, so that'll be fun when that comes out. Number 14 is Lakeside News, Hollywood's best selection of comic books, magazines, and selected souvenirs. That's really cool. That is where we are here, but perhaps we no longer have access to this part of it because it looks it looks to be right it looks to be right here and and it, it's looking like PV's polar pipelines frozen coca-cola concoctions themed after the movie the uh jet man oh, what's his name the rocketeer there he is there's his jet pack this is your rocketeer themed beverage outpost and I believe that it used to be the entrance to what was known as Lakeside News <clears throat> but we can still access it through Keystone. I don't know about the Disney character clothing, jewelry and accessories with a Hollywood flair but Keystone Clothiers to this day well, up until recently featured a combination of Marvel and Star Wars items. Um, the Marvel recently left, and now we have some of the current collections, the Walt Disney World collections are being sold here. Here's the peach tea, I think that's called, and some of the spirit jerseys. Well, Boba Fett, Vader, I mean, these, R2-D2, this is definitely technically Disney character clothing. I think we're living up to the original use of Keystone Clothiers. Well, this is something I'm very sad we are unable to do in 2024. Number 16, Pacific Electric Pictures. You can star in your own home video version of a Hollywood spectacular. And you were able to do that, let's see, number 16 is right there which would be uh right here while you're no longer able to star in your own home video version of a hollywood spectacular you are able to enjoy a fine starbucks beverage here at the trolley car cafe this is a starbucks location in hollywood studio so if you want that exact latte that you get at home or that biscuit breakfast sandwich muffin corn thing you can probably find it here as well and uh you know we say we recommend that you go to joffrey's locations when you are in walt disney world because they are a unique experience that you can have here but if you feel like nothing makes you happy like a starbucks uh, beverage or treat, then you are in luck. And that's the way it seems a lot of people feel because they get very big lines here throughout the day. Right now, it's uh, not so much that, but be warned in the morning, this is, this is gonna cost you some time. All right, number 17, sights and sounds. That's back here on this little corner, back where Keystone Clothiers is. Oh, what an amazing sign. Oh my gosh, there it is. All right, Sound, sights and sounds. Record your own music video presented by Sela. Well, there it is. I'm afraid we're unable to do that in this location now. But how 
absolutely cool is it that you could? And that the sign is still up. Not only the sign upstairs, but you know, on the top of the building, on the side of the building, but also on the front door. Sights and sounds, acting and voice lessons. Yule M. Pressum, Master Thespian, Singer, B Flat, Voice Coach, Bill Moore, Account Executive. We finished some of Hollywood's finest. Um, check's not accepted. <laughs> okay. Okay, 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 okay. Well, this is where you would be able to go inside and make music videos. Um, my Uncle Graham has an example of this. I know I talk about him a lot, but I mean, he was killing it, okay? He was doing all the things you could possibly do. He was rickrolling you back in the in the day. If you have ever been rickrolled, my Uncle Graham invented it because he did a music video in a studio like this to Never Gonna Give You Up. We're starting a new uh, page. Uh, now we are at Lakeside Circle here, the attraction starting with number one, Super star television presented by sony looks like the spot that we're looking for is now called the hyperion theater the hyperion theater is an operating theater you can walk inside to this day and watch frozen sing-along and it's an amazing show and we will do that but when it first opened it was not that it was not called the hyperion and it was superstar television presented by sony Welcome to Superstar Television. Superstar Television is a unique and oft-times hilarious attraction of the studio. Not only does it offer a delightful capsule history of TV, but in this theater, many of your favorite shows, from Gilligan's Island to Cheers, feature a very special guest star, you. Oh my gosh, this is where you could be in an episode of I Love Lucy. This was such... A cool experience. It's like make your own music video on steroids. It was a whole production, sets, costumes, lights, cameras, action. You had it all, um, and it was amazing. You can't do that now. Now you can go see the Frozen sing along. All right, number two, the Monster Sound Show presented by Sony, an outrageously eerie exploration of a movie sound effects. All right, I see number two is here. All right, I understand where this is in relationship to Superstar Television. That can only mean one thing. Mickey Shorts Theater, you weren't always here. Or you weren't always called what you're called now, showing what you're showing. I was actually lucky enough to be picked as a volunteer for the Monster Sound Show. The only thing I remember doing is turning a big kind of barrel thing that was full of glass and it made all of this crazy crunching broken glass noise <laughs> and it was really fun i loved the fact that you know i got pulled up and was able to participate uh, no longer can you see a sound effects show in this location it is now called the mickey shorts theater and it shows one short in particular and that is vacation fun and it is very fun it is it is a lot of fun and it's about vacationing and um i think we should go see it let's do it hi i'm michelle um i'm sage's mom and uh i used to work at disney a long time ago uh, i was the original mgm studios which was so awesome and i worked at hunchback of notre dame as esmeralda i did the superstar television show which was really cool one of the original monster shows which was really cool the monster sound show which was super fun i remember specifically one time uh, <laughs> during the sound show the monster sound show at first I thought this kid was like really excited because it's not really a scary show. They just show you all the different sound pieces that you can make. But I think he was just really, really scared. I was actually lucky enough to be picked as a volunteer for the Monster Sound Show. Because as we were standing there doing the whole thing, the poor guy just peed his pants. Working at Disney is an amazing, magical, memorable place that 
you, if, until you're there and until you're working there, you never really know where you're gonna find that magic again because it's just not the same anywhere else. How fun is vacation fun at the Mickey Shorts Theater? I wish I could attend a sound effects show in a modern day Hollywood studios, that would be the best, but you can visit Potato Land, <laughs> which is a close second. <laughs> All right, number three, it's a 50s situation comedy come to life. Every table has its very own TV set, so you won't miss a minute of your favorite shows. Nifty sandwiches, salad, seafood, and more reservations available. 50s primetime cafe, huh? Number three. Number three. Hello, 50s Primetime. 50s Primetime Cafe is known for its audience participation. Your family members are serving your meal and they're making you eat your peas. And uh, you're either gonna do it or you're going to get in trouble. You can see everything is designed like the set of a 1950s sitcom or situation comedy, as they said in the guidebook from 1989. And listen, they got it right. Everything about this restaurant is perfect. The design, the audience participation, your servers have been instructed to force you to finish everything on your plate. And you are hard pressed to have a better time in Hollywood Studios. I know my cast members at All Ears are gonna think that I am insane for saying that because traditionally I have said that I was terrified of this restaurant because it's scary having people force you to eat food and pretend to be your family members. And sometimes I'm like, are you my cousin? How did you get here? Did you get put on some sort of list? Were you notified to fly here to Orlando when I said I was coming on vacation to Walt Disney World? Why are you dressed in this outfit? And why are you force feeding me mashed potatoes? But I've come to the realization that everything here is make believe. <laughs> and that we're all in on the fun, and it is a safe place to eat and enjoy. All right, number four, tune in lounge. After a hard day at the sitcom, <laughs> you'll feel right at home in this comfy living room lounge, beer, wine, and cocktails. All right, let's see, it is number four. Yep, I think we found it right here. Right next door to 50's Primetime Cafe, you will find the Tune In Lounge. It kind of looks like a side door speakeasy sort of thing. And you know what? You're, you're not wrong if you think that because it is a secret feeling kind of lounge. In fact, it feels so cool. You're like, really? I'm just allowed to walk in here and, and hang out and just see stuff? So you'll find vintage televisions playing classic TV sitcoms. Um, but this is a great place to hang out. This is like the spot after dark, grab your adult beverage, grab a seat. It's also a place to sit while you wait for your table to be ready over at 50's prime time. But not much of, has changed since opening day. It's still uh, designed like a living room. It still has really cool uh, decor from the 50s and television sets and a bar. All right, number five, Hollywood and Fine. Cafeteria of the Stars with stylish Art Deco interior. Menu features salad, sandwiches. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna lose my mind. Honestly, I want to go back to the Disney MGM Studios of 1989 only so I can have all these sandwiches. They sound delicious. Smoked baby back ribs specific, grilled steaks and fresh seafood. Number five. Okay, I think, oh my goodness. Look at this beautiful place. So the format of this restaurant is now a character dining buffet. Uh, hosted by Minnie, and it's seasonal, so it rotates based on the season. Minnie wears um, a different kind of outfit. There's a little bit of a different decor inside, and the food changes. So I think it's really cool that, yes, this was a cafeteria-style restaurant. Um, 
when it first opened. It's still open to this day. The format is a little different. The food is a little different, but you can still eat there. And now you get to dine with Mini, which is really, really cool. Dinosaur Gertie's ice cream extinct, ice cream of extinction. The architecture is California crazy, but the flavor is simply scrumptious ice cream novelties. All right, California crazy was a style of design that this is modeled after. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Gertie. Here she is in all of her glory. As you can see, her eyes light up and smoke comes out of her nose day and night. Currently, Dinosaur Gertie's Ice Cream of Extinction is closed for the day. But how amazing is this? A place we can still dine to this day serving ice cream novelties from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. daily. You want to make sure to look over this little fence here into the grass because you can see the tracks where Gertie, the dinosaur, walked and they continue over here as well. Number number six, Min and Bill's Dockside Diner. Min and Bill were unfortunately removed from the Dockside Diner as theming references. And now all we have is Bui Oh Bui, It's Good Food, Dockside Diner. We've got number eight, Golden Age Souvenirs. Showing up right about there which means, oh my goodness, I think we have an opening day retail location right before our eyes. Nestled in between the Hyperion Theater and the Mickey Shorts Theater, there is an outdoor retail location now selling all of your frozen dreams. If you want an Olaf plush, if you are looking for an Elsa dress or something inspired by the world of Frozen, you are in luck right out here. Originally in this location, you could find gifts from the golden age of radio and TV. How, how unbelievable a difference from opening day that now everything is frozen, a piece of intellectual property that didn't even, I mean, it was far from existing in 1989. And originally this would have sold merchandise that celebrated the golden age of film and television. And now it's celebrating the golden age of a couple of years ago. <laughs> Ooh, this looks cool at the Backlot Annex. This is number nine. Indiana Jones Epic Stunt Spectacular, a live action packed production of daring stunts and thrilling special effects. You may be chosen as an extra for a dramatic chase scene featuring rapid fire battles, runaway trucks, and an explosive finale all staged live on three gigantic movie sets. What? So while Hollywood Studios opened on May 1st, 1989, Indiana Jones Up Epic Stunt Spectacular opened on August 25th, 1989. Not that long after. Um, and because it was such a short period of time, you could have gone within the first year, I absolutely think, and because this map is telling us it's open, that we should go inside. Let's go watch Indiana Jones of Extent Spectacular. What I warn you about is the fact that <laughs> this section here, you may be chosen as an extra for a dramatic chase scene featuring rapid fire battles, runaway trucks, and an explosive finale all staged live on three gigantic movie sets. The uh, audience participation aspect went away during the COVID-19 closures. And when the show reopened, it was no longer part of the show. No more extras. No one is chosen from the audience anymore, um, which is too bad. I, it was a really fun part of the show, but uh, also understandable. And we'll still get to have 
this. <laughs> it still looks exactly like that, which is awesome. Aspirational things in Walt Disney World. This says Star Tours premieres early 1990, presented by M&M's Chocolate Candies, the ultimate thrill adventure from the creative forces of Disney and George Lucas. Oh my goodness, that's number ten. Oh wow, beautiful. <laughs> Hello, Star Tours. Star Tours is not an opening day ride. It opens in 90, the year after the park opened. And it is a classic, but it's not opening day. And unfortunately, we're gonna have to leave ourselves with this feeling of longing, this sense of longing, and walk on by. Backlot Express offers custom-built burgers, salads, hot dogs, char-broiled char chicken, snacks, and beverages. That's number 11. Oh. Oh, wow, yes. Look at that water tower and uh, all kinds. I think it's a, yes, this looks like, uh, it looks like this. Scrolling through the menu right now and placing a mobile order for my own dinner here. We're, yes, we're eating in Backlot Express, which is an opening day restaurant in Disney, MGM Studios, Disney Hollywood Studios, 1989. Um, the burgers don't look to be that customizable. They do have an interesting selection of burgers. In terms of the charbroiled chicken, there is a salad with chicken on it. Maybe it's charbroiled. Otherwise, it's chicken strips. But I love this restaurant. It is so cool the way that it's themed. The theming in Backlot Express is based on the idea that it is a working prop studio. Um, the part in here that is my favorite, of course, is this um, hovercraft that is from Horizons, the ride that was in Epcot um, before Mission Space. There was a ride there called Horizons, it was my favorite, and that is an actual prop from, from the ride. <laughs> I always like to come in here and pretend that I'm gonna punch in. Fun to like pretend going to work while I'm at work. <laughs> 12, here we have indoor vendors. Let's find it on the map here. All right, right there next to Star Tours. So uh, it appears that we have found it right here. Now, now it's called uh, Tatooine Traders. Um, that won't be opening until early 1990 as well. I do want to take time to shout out ABC Commissary, a quick service restaurant that is loved by many. Um, most of us at, at All Ears and also much of the crew at Disney Food Blog rave about some of the menu items here and just in general love this place. Um, it is not teased on the guidebook, um, but it wasn't to open until 1990, so it is neither foreshadowed or um, open. And then a year later in 1991, there would be this exciting addition, sci-fi dine-in theater, where you actually get to sit 
inside a car, basically. It's not a real car, but um, you get to sit in that. It's like a kind of like a ride vehicle with a table to hold your food and uh, watch cool uh, old sci-fi films play on a screen while you eat. And also in 1991, across the street, a very, very, very special attraction near and dear to my heart and to the hearts of so many on the All Ears team. I'm talking about, over there, Muppet Vision 3D. The area we now know as Muppet Courtyard was planned to have more than just the one attraction. There was a ride designed and various restaurant concepts, but unfortunately, Jim Henson passed away before they could get everything worked out and then it just never happened. It, the expansion never occurred. Um, except we did get Pizza Rizzo, which is amazing. We've reached a sad point in our tour because a huge part of your day in 1989 at Hollywood, at Disney MGM Studios was going on a very long two hour tram tour that is gone, 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 gone. It is gone. Backstage studio tour. Step through the gate of the Disney MGM Studios and enter a working movie and television production center. Your stay will include an in-depth look at live action movies and television and a unique opportunity to visit Disney animators working on their newest featurettes. Please note, this two hour guided tour involves an hour of walking. The backstage shuttle station is where your adventure begins. You'll be introduced to the business of show business. Then you'll board a backstage shuttle and travel into the heart of the production center. Highlights include visits to Two, costuming where skilled designers create the clothes worn by your favorite stars. Scenic shop. If it's in the script, here's where studio craftsmen will build it. Four, oh my gosh. Residential street. I think, was that the Golden Girls house? Oh my gosh, I'm emotional. Look closely at the houses on this outdoor set you may recognize the homes of famous movie and TV families. Oh, I miss it. Number five, Catastrophe Canyon. Ugh. A perilous journey through a unique outdoor set. You'll experience amazing artificial disasters that seem real enough in the movies, but even more impressive up close. Number six, New York Street, a giant backlot set used to film busy street scenes. Force perspective buildings at the end of the street make these two blocks look like an entire cityscape. All right, here we go on the walking tour. Number seven, water effects tank. You may be the star of a dramatic ocean storm scene my Uncle Graham and I were, we did this. Number eight, special effects workshop and shooting stage. Explore the fascinating science of optical and mechanical effects. Awesome. Number nine, sound stages. Specially designed stages let you look in on movies and television shows in production. Those were working. They, they filmed uh, New Mickey Mouse Club there. Brittany, Justin, you know, other, you know, Brian Gosling, Ken, Kendall himself, right in that building, growing up, me and kids on 10, post-production, editing and audio. And then 11, the Walt Disney Theater, the final stop on your adventure where you'll see special sneak previews of new movies. And there was a restaurant there, studio catering company. I mean, literally, I think it was here because it was right next to, right over here is where, where the Honey, I Shrunk the Kids playground was. And it was like next to that. So I think it was back there. Um, ugh, so sad. All right, we've got one last page here. The Magic of Disney Animation Studio Courtyard. 
attractions. Disney MGM Studios animation tour. You'll watch artists create the newest featurettes starring classic Disney characters. <sighs> Welcome to Star Wars Launch Bay and the Disney Junior Dance Party, friends. Star Wars Launch Bay is an exhibit and a rest area. Um, <laughs> you can see some uh, props and some concept art from various Star Wars films. And you can also meet Chewbacca and BB-8 and Darth Vader. The Disney Junior Dance Party is a dance party for uh, younger kids. And you can see, they can see, as a family, you can see together um, characters like Vampirina and Mickey wearing his roadster outfit. And they, there's a DJ who's like gets the party hyped and gets everybody dancing. And they have what I believe to be the most comfortable benches anywhere in Walt Disney World. Uh, they are so soft, they are almost like beds. All right, number two, then enter the remarkable world of a real animation studio. There used to be all of these artists working and sitting at, at animation desks and you could walk through and look at them through windows. All right, let's talk restaurants. Number four, the soundstage restaurant, where dining is big business. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's a reference to a movie called Big Business, sorry, Lily, Lily Tomlin and Bette Midler. And uh, they play twins, but they get switched at birth. So one of each twin ends up with the other of each twin, which is why they look nothing alike, but then they ended up, end up meeting their twins. And of course, two of them are like, grow up in the country and the other two grow up in the city so it's a juxtaposition and each of them gets to play their own twin and it's a great movie i'm obsessed with it and it's really funny <laughs> there haven't been any other references like this this one might uh might surprise you a little bit um because it is indeed the disney junior dance party <laughs> was a uh, was a restaurant and um yeah, not only a restaurant, but also a, a, a bar that I'm gonna, you know, we might as well just hop to, hop to that. Uh, number five, the Catwalk Bar, where beer, wine, cocktails, and specialty drinks are served. It was actually a, on an upper level um, above the restaurant, looking down over it, truly like it was uh, a catwalk of a soundstage where the lighting uh, might be or different, other different things kind of rigged and controlled uh, from, from there. And uh, yeah, now it's a Disney Junior dance party. Hi, I'm John and I'm one of the opening leaders uh, from the original Disney MGM Studios. Uh, so I was an uh, attractions leader uh, and my home was the backstage studio, uh, studio tour which include, included two large areas. It was the backstage tram tour, uh, and then also the walking tour afterwards. It was an amazing experience. I can tell you that when we first opened, that uh, there was nothing that could compare to the backstage tour when the park first opened compared to anything that was at Epcot or at the Magic Kingdom. So demand for that attraction was insane. And I remember at the beginning of the park, and this will help you understand how Disney learns and adjusts in people management, that there was one day in which the wait line for the backstage tour went all the way to the entrance turnstiles to the park itself, all the way. So you're talking a wait time of three, four, five hours. So what we uh, learned at the same time was that there are other attractions. They're also really great, but people weren't aware of, uh, like the Indiana Jones stunt show that didn't have any attendance. So we learned if we position cast members right along the entrance of the park to sell away from the backstage tour line and to other attractions like Indiana Jones, it uh, helped to manage the line down. That turned into basically a freestanding cast member and a uh, early version of a tip board, which then we were able to point out to visitors, 
here's the wait time. And, and the nice thing about the Hollywood uh, period theming, we could use chalk to write what the times were uh, for the attractions. And so then visitors were able to see for themselves that, yeah, it makes sense. Why would I want to wait in line 90 minutes for this attraction when I can spend 10 minutes waiting for another attraction? So when you now go to My Disney Experience and use your app, think back to the opening of the Disney MGM Studios. Think back to that line at the backstage tour that went all the way to the turnstiles. And it's because of that moment that we then created tip boards that now guide you on your phone for your Walt Disney vacation ever since then. Well, what did you think of this video? Did doing Disney's Hollywood Studios, AKA, Disney MGM Studios, the old fashioned way, show you a new way to do this park? Or is it out with the old and in with the new? And you're glad things have been modernized and you get to do things the uh, new and cool way. Let us know in the comments below. And if you like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe now. Watch me go do this exact same thing in Magic Kingdom. See you next time. Bye.